that's on the YouTube channel. We have Jeffro with Jeffro's Fish Keeping here with us this evening as a special guest. And we're just going to be hanging out. Uh, he came in from Iowa. It was about an 11-hour trip with just traffic and, and so forth. Came in yesterday, unfortunately. They do have to – he's here with his son. They have to depart uh, tomorrow, Sunday. So we didn't get as much time to spend. But we can kind of talk about – today and go over a few things if you guys have any questions for me or myself if you guys haven't checked out jeffro definitely do so everything would be linked down in the description below down in the description there is also a link so following this live stream uh at eight o'clock eastern standard time there will be a live stream over on jeffro's channel and we're going to be switching things up it sounds like a little bit um where he's going to be challenging me and doing like a little interview uh, which is going to be a little bit different. So I'm looking forward to it, and we should see how it goes. It should, should be quite entertaining, so definitely join us over there as well. All right, so we have Dank Tanks in the house, Daryl Deemer. We got V-Stag, Bob Kaler's Fish Hobby, Jamie McDonald. Thank you guys so much. Um, again, thank you for the moderators and all you guys and the support that you do, not only from here at Sergeant Tank Pets, but throughout the entire community. Um, let's see here. Ha ha, how the tables have turned. Yeah, we're going to have him on the hot seat. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> I'm on it every day. That's yeah. okay. So, yeah, we'll give it a few minutes here. This was an impromptu. I just scheduled this uh, about 30 minutes ago, and I haven't been too consistent here on the platform as of late. So, as far as notifications going out, that type of stuff. Uh, <laughs> you see that the wrench is taken away from Michael Trevino. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> I don't even know if you even noticed that. I forgot I removed that. <laughs> we got Romaine Paul in the house. What's up, Romaine Paul? <laughs> so let us know how audio video is. Um, again, uh, we'll give it a few minutes here. We got 14 watching. If you guys have any questions, not only for me, but this is your time to also take advantage of if you want to know more about jeffro and his channel or whatever it is uh jeremy what is what is like hanging out with santa claus <laughs> i don't know if he's got that much if i grow mine out, i got quite a bit of gray going on but <laughs> perfect audio sounds great cool. thanks for letting us know we can hear fine all right so i noticed i didn't want to give you the satisfaction of me saying something haha -ha. We'll see how Michael does, and maybe we can turn on the ranch a little bit later on. But uh, we're going to keep him on uh, timeout for a little bit. Yep. Uh, Bare Bottom Aquatics, hello. One here, he won that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I guess um, let's just start off. I mean, how was your trip here from Iowa? Trip here started out was going to be like, I think it said that it was going to be like eight hours. And it ended up being an 11 hour trip because around Chicago, somewhere around in there, um, we picked up some kind of a toll road that was really backed up. And um, by the time we got, um, we s slowed down to a near stop to the time that we got to go back up to 70 miles an hour was like three hour delay. So, you know, up around the bottom of Lake Michigan, was terrible traffic way up into Indiana through Indiana actually and didn't really pick back up until we got up into Michigan but yeah eight hour trip was 11 hours it was crazy <laughs> no we didn't get lost Brandon <laughs> we didn't get lost we was on the right track originally I thought about trying to bypass the tolls but that was saying that it was going to take 30 minutes longer to get here so I thought, ah, eh, we'll just do the tolls. You stop, you pay. We had cash on us, no big deal. And uh, the tolls really killed us, but I don't know how I could have really got around the traffic, really. Um, I've done my fair share of the 8090 Turnpike, and I'm telling you guys from first-hand experience, make sure that you legitimately, there's a couple occasions I end up getting hit with a pretty hefty fine, not realizing that uh, I, it was a legitimate mistake on my behalf. But they don't send out notices until you end up getting that, that fine in the mail and you better pay it. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah, that's happened to me a couple of times where I end up bypassing one of those in the express lane, not realizing it, and accidentally end up missing one of the tolls. So right. just as a tip for you, uh, they will get your license plate um, and they will send you, 
Yeah, I mean, it might take three or four months. Probably took about six months um, after the fact, and I forgot all about it and end up realizing, end up spending about a hundred bucks over that. Uh, yeah. So thank you, uh, um, 8090. Yeah. But other than that, the trip went good. Uh, we got checked in originally. That 11 hours was like really hard on me. Um, yeah, the car that I got was supposedly an upgrade to a midsize. It was a Nissan Sentra, and um, it was really tight. It was a really tight fit, not very comfortable. We did, however, get checked into the hotel. And because originally, whenever we got here, we were going to come over and see Jeremy. And then on the way here, I was like, eh, I don't really feel like it, but. I couldn't resist came over last night and we hung out till gosh probably midnight or so last night went back home and refreshed the batteries and then we hit it at like eight o'clock this morning and we've been going non-stop all day so it's been a great great trip well i'm glad to hear i was definitely an honor that you wanted to travel up our way we don't get a lot of individuals that come up to the market not that we don't have a lot of the michigan market is definitely a big market and we can talk a little bit about that and i think we'll touch base over on your channel so again anybody popping in here we will be doing a more in-depth live stream over on jeffro's channel and all of that link is down in the description for you guys so definitely join us uh eight o'clock eastern standard time so soon after we conclude this one we'll have a little bit of break in between there and it should be entertaining i'm looking forward to um the interview that uh he has planned so um kind of mysterious and up in the air so we'll see how it goes uh let's see here we got priscilla in the house how you doing priscilla can't stay she says fave dudes but she's out shopping and stuff that's awesome hope that you have good weather over there in colorado uh how long is your trip and where are you going i think you uh, already touched on that we got darcy in the house how you doing island queen uh let's see here and if we miss any questions, you guys, I'm not doing intentional. Please just go ahead and, and put it back in, in the chat. We'll make sure that we get to you. Mike's saying it's really weird seeing Jeff in your studio. <laughs> it's having an out-of-body experience right now. Really, he's back in Iowa. Yeah. It's just, this is, yeah, just a big Jeremy's thing of your imagination. Jeremy's really good at doing hangout, you know. Yeah. I'm really still in Iowa. <laughs> he's just really good at super. This is like a modified green scheme on steroids. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. It, it was one of the coolest things, though, getting to see this little nook, his little studio area here, because I've seen it so many times on my computer screen. Was it what you expected? I always, I, I don't know, when people come and visit the fish rooms, was it something, It's and I'm putting him on the spot right now because he wasn't, he didn't know I was going to ask him that, but I was I've, like. I've watched some of your fish room tours, and it is set up like. Earlier, whenever I was talking to you about the one fish that was moving the rocks for you because she wanted you to feed her. Yeah. Um, I think you did a Facebook uh, video one week. You're doing that Facebook videos per day or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I knew right where the view from where you were at was. Um, I knew this setup back here with these two 90-gallon tanks because you used to go live back there. Yep. So it all looked familiar to me. I've seen it all before. And uh, it was really cool right to get to see it in person. How you got so it's kind of what you expected. So right. that's good. It wasn't like right. Yeah. So you kind of know what you're walking into. Right on. Uh, let's see here. Michael said any fish that uh, you've gotten so far, mm. or what they may be. I am going to bring home some uh, inlers. Um, so far, that's pretty much all. I mean the the fish store that we went to today. There was a lot of cool stuff there, but I was just focused on videoing, so I didn't sure. really shop too much but i think i've uh just so far just going to bring home some inlers yeah make sure that you guys are subscribed if you want to know a little bit more behind the scenes and what was going on here and that type of stuff uh that will be out before i can guarantee it on his channel uh sooner than mine i didn't do a whole lot of videoing um you know i know that may disappoint some and it's just it, it's all about mindset um we have over probably 250 videos here on the platform and actually if i would have kept a lot of them we would be probably over 400 videos and i was just too hard on myself because i'm i'm too much of a perfectionist so if it's not perfect to me then i don't upload it and i know that's unfortunate because you guys unfortunately miss out and uh something that i'm still working through um personally so it, i would say that would be a flaw of mine that's a that's a negative because that's not how we should look at as creators. But. 
Uh, let's see here. Uh, we got Raph in the house. How you doing? Bear Bottom Aquatics. Hello, if I didn't already acknowledge. We got Cory Boy Aquatics. 54 Punchy. How you doing, Pam? Uh, if I it mispronounce this, I do apologize. Um, I've seen you in a chat before, and I definitely appreciate the support. Vanoski, if I'm saying that, um, I'm probably butchering that name, and I apologize. Uh, but said, good to see you guys together. Uh, we got Mob Guppy in the house. How you doing? Uh, did you guys go look at tanks and see fish? What's your fave? Uh, okay, this is from Mr. B's Fishing Things. Um, sounds like this is a question for Jeff. Mm. Did you guys go look at tanks and see fish? Uh, what's your fave tank fish you saw? Well, I'll tell you, there was a really cool frag tank today, and it had to be 70 to 100 gallon frag tank. I would love to own that tank. Um, I could just fill it with plecos. You know, I just, it was amazing. But they had it set up with a great system and they were growing out corals of all kinds of different types. And then they had some really cool saltwater fish that would come in through the grates and go up and down through it. Sure. And that was really awesome. I don't get to see a whole lot of really cool saltwater stuff in my area. If it's the frag one that you're referring to, that was, I want to say, that was actually an old commercial style door that was modified and turned into a frag tank. Very awesome. So what he's talking about is, is similar to a footprint. It's basically a low boy in steroids is yeah. like a 50 gallon low boy. And then multiply that by four. I mean, yeah. it's probably pretty close to the size. It's, it's an awesome tank for sure. Uh, let's see. We got Steve's salty shrimp, shrimpery and more. How you doing, Steve? It's always nice seeing you in the chat. We got Charlie in the house. How you doing? Uh, let's see. Any questions? <laughs> Michael said, did Jeff give you one of them sweet shirts? <laughs> it's on back order. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Dank said, if Dank was there, would it be cooler? Yeah, probably. Let's see here. We got Angel on the house. How you doing, buddy? Uh, Pam said, it's been raining and thunderstorm most of the day here. Well, that's not good. We definitely, we've been in a drought, so we could use the rain. I want like a solid week of just straight rain. It's been high 90s for the most part. It's been a little bit cooler this past week, but we've literally in the last month and a half that I can remember we've had maybe an hour of intermittent rain. So it's been pretty bad. Uh, Mr. B said what? No swag exchange. I really don't have any merch. This is the only shirt I've ever got. I ordered it on Teespring just as a test thing and it's really not that great, but I just wore it today to look official. <laughs> 54 Punchy, we had some snow and a couple of days ago, believe it or not, hail almost every day. Wow. All right, so Mob Guppy said, so we had our first meeting today of the Central Arkansas Aquarium Society. We have eight great people there at Sergeant Tank. That's awesome. Two thumbs up. I'm all about the clubs. Anybody that's been following me long enough knows I'm a huge um, supporter and really try to push clubs. Clubs is where it's at, and I know not everybody has it if you want to know more about growing in a club and more about that type of stuff um i have done some videos on the channel here you can definitely check it out but yeah more power to you guys even if you have to drive two or three hours people do it believe it or not even in our market and uh, i know oftentimes the magic question is how do you get a club going you have to realize that there's a lot of laws bylaws and so forth there in place if you do it the right way I mean, you have to have a board if you do it the right way. You have to have, you know, so there is a lot of work that goes into it. Ours branched off from another club that was developed back in the early part of the 70s here in the in the Michigan area. 
um, a little bit south of us, about 45 minutes. And then once that was originated, a lot of the members from there are still active members and participants of that club. And then it branched off, I want to say in the mid nineties uh, to where it's at now. And membership wise, active members, they're pay members. I, I can't remember the last statistics, but um, it's up there and, it, and it's, I'm, I'm glad to see that the growth that one of my biggest things here for social media is if I can get more people as we continue to grow as a community and here specifically on this channel, um, it's important to me to see youth um, returning Aquarius, getting to the hobby, that type of stuff. So I love to see that you guys are active in your club. I probably have a passion about it because I regret not joining a long time ago. I've been active for the last couple of years and I've been on the board since the beginning of this year. Um, so, yeah. All right. Um, uh, Michaels is wondering for you, Jeff, what do you think of all our aquariums here? Well, you can be honest. I Don't think it's back. hot as heck in here. <laughs> you can just you can it, call it what it is. It is it is hot in here. I don't want to have a hat on right now because I'm a sweaty beast right now, but it is what it is. I mean, surprisingly though, when he gets all the fans going on really good, it's not that bad, but it's definitely humid in here, you know. Mm -hmm. Um so there's that. Um I was really shocked that there's not a heater on any of the aquariums that I saw anyhow. I mean, there may have been one tank, but he never heats any of his aquariums. So that made me feel a little bit better about my um, my 10-gallon fish rack that I've got in my dining room. Um, he did talk to me a lot about he's had a lot better luck at lower temps getting stuff to breed. So that made me feel a lot better, too. Um because I was really worried I was going to have to do something to heat those tanks. But I'm not going to keep any in citrus in there or anything that really requires a little bit warmth. But, I mean, the way he's talking, they would even be able to breed at lower temps. So, yeah. And he's had better luck at that. So um, no heaters really surprised me, but it made me feel at ease, too. Like, um, Do we want to talk a little bit about heaters? Sure, go for it. Okay. This is a rant I could go on about for days. <laughs> And I'm just glad that he brought it up. I would say one of the biggest failures that I've noticed, we've been hardcore breeding through 13, 14 years now, and I've been in the hobby since 1990. But I can tell you from not getting out of the hobby, I've been consistent um, in the hobby for the last 13 years, um, almost 14 now. And it definitely dates back. But I can tell you my biggest failures was the issues of heat and regulation. And what I mean by that, a prime example, somebody I don't know on a personal basis, but somebody I definitely respect that's a veteran aquarist in the hobby that you guys have probably seen video, various videos on throughout the platform, and that's Rusty Wessel. You ever go back and you see and identify specifically what he keeps and how he does it, that Im implementation I did years ago for myself. Um, and then once I heard that kind of validated to me, my theory and the basis behind it made me feel a little bit better have a high respect for somebody who's been in this hobby much, much longer than myself. And the reason that is when you have somebody like that, and I'm just using that as an example, understanding the actual climate and what the degrees and temperature are within that specific region, knowing even in some of the rift lakes, depending on, you know, um, whether if it's in South or Central America, if it's in Africa, wherever it is, people that have actually been there and I've heard testimonials from and they've actually physically have gone in the water, not only tested, but felt it for themselves. It's much cooler than what people think. So going back to what he's talking about, we don't honestly keep heaters in the wintertime. That's a little bit different. Um, you know, it, it really depends on what you're looking at doing. If you're trying to, if you're trying to increase the metabolism that can play a catch 22. That can be a good and bad thing, depending on if you're trying to trigger spawning, if you're trying to mimic springtime, rainy season. I, I could honestly go on because 
it's I've talked about it before, and I don't want to turn into a full on rant, but it definitely ties into. I guess the easiest way I can put this whole thing, stop overcomplicating it. And I did actually a whole live stream, which was kind of like a rant, talking about why people are overcomplicating the hobby. And they're constantly trying to trigger things. And I've talked about this before, wild caught versus captively bred. Captively bred species have been conditioned to withstand certain water parameters, completely opposites, polar opposite, apples to oranges, not even on the same platform to that of which you would collect from the wild. I'm going to I'm gonna treat that completely different than what I would, something that has already been conditioned through generations um, versus something that I just obtained from the wild. So hopefully that makes sense. But yes, we don't use heaters and I don't have any on. It doesn't make any sense. We don't have an air exchanger. I don't run a chiller on any of my tanks. I do have some evapor evaporative cooling um, to maintain the temperature, but uh, yeah, people could say, well, you could run an AC unit. Sure, I'm not going to do it. To cost. I try to save on cost anywhere I can, especially running costs. Our running costs and our bill alone, just for electricity, just in our fish rooms and upwards, is probably $250. And in order for me to justify and continue in the hobby myself, I have to be able to replenish those costs. And how I save on cost is by doing an and kind of taking advantage of some of those situations. It is well insulated down here, but I do agree. You, do, you just have to get used to it. We do run a dehumidifier, obviously, to control that, which definitely puts off a lot of heat alone. Um, but if I could maintain, once we ever move someday and we ever do that quote-unquote fish barn, I can guarantee it's going to be reg regulated all year round. I will regulate it to maintain a temperature for me, rather if it's cichlids if it's live bears my sweet spot and i might have two different zones depending on what it is but it'll be a range anywhere from 68 to 73 74 degrees like 75 is tops um and i've been very successful breeding many different species in the mid 70s where i don't have to increase and maintain you know, mid eighties to, it's just, I don't know why people are doing that. They're wondering why their fish are dying. They're cooking their fish. It's like their, their metabolism, because it's so high, you have to constantly be power feeding them. Why not lower their metabolic, um, metabolic rate in order to stabilize them, to give them better chance at life. I don't know. It's just my thoughts. I'm yeah. down with rant, ran over mic drop your turn. Boom. Got him into a rant already. Another thing that I notice is he talks with his hands. You know, he did a couple of judo jumps. God, a couple I of gets judo me pumped jumps. up. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that I did uh, kind of learn that I hadn't ever dealt with, um, you know, I just got done spawning some zebra daniels a while back, and I spawned those out in my 10 gallon aquarium, and I got them on a low flow sponge filter. I mean, the flow was really, really low, but. Um, He's got some stuff that you'll see in a, a video that um, I'll have coming up here one of these days that um, totally opened my eyes to that. So I like how he has his fry. You know, I mean, a lot of his fry are so tiny. I mean, he's got a bunch of different species going right now. and He's got a really good thing going with it and just opened my eyes. And I love that. That's one of the greatest things, you know. Mm hmm. So. Tropical Aquarium said lower temp increases life, but slows the growth rate down somewhat. Yes, there is ways to do that. Um, if we start talking about breeding, I would be here for, it was hard for him to even go around because any tank that he's going to point out, he knows I'm not going to get a watered down response. So he had to, <laughs> he had to pick wisely because we got 110 tanks ish. I stopped honestly counting because it just stresses me out thinking about it, but um yeah so in with all of our tanks what is there one thing that you notice let's throw the ball back a couple of different things what would you do with this tank setup and is there anything you've noticed now that you've seen it in person that i've kind of talked about and i'm not putting you on the spot mm -hmm. there's really no right or wrong Anything that you've noticed since you've been here in person, kind of what I've talked about since I've been doing video on YouTube? 
Um, the one thing that I noticed on the, I'll just answer the second one first. The one thing that I did notice is he does split up a lot of different species into multiple tanks. Like on some of his shrimp, he's got them spread throughout all kinds of different tanks. I like that. So if there's something that happens in one aquarium, he doesn't lose that line because he's got them spread out in some other tanks. He's got that with a lot of his fish. You know, he's got severums and all kinds of different tanks and all kinds of different stuff like that. So I really like that. As far as different, I mean, the only thing I could think of is do your barn idea. You know, I mean, um, the way he changes his water is going good for him. I mean, it's all one thing I do like about it is like mine is spread throughout the whole house. His is just down here. You know, I mean, he's got the birds upstairs which they're really cool too, by the way, you know, um, he's got the birds upstairs, but his domain is down here. His YouTube studio is down here. Everything is down here in the basement. So, um, he's got that set up pretty good. A commitment that, and I've talked about this before and I'm glad that you pointed it out. One recommendation, anybody that's married, especially, and has a family, I've been married now almost 14 years come next month. And of course we have four kids and they're not into the hobby. Um, and keep that in mind, we're definitely a family of pets and we've shared that here on this, we've shown off our pets. You can, you can check it out in the birds. You can check that out as well. We've shown those here on the channel. That's why it's Sergeant Tank Pets. Um, even though it's a little bit more gears of, geared towards obviously aquatic type stuff, but, um, I don't even know where I was going with that, but I mean, yeah, to me, just maintain a balance and that was one commitment i made to myself and to the family a long time ago is where i don't even have a desire to ever even put a tank up there i don't know if you guys have ever had a tank unfortunately crack or leak um but on a main level that can cause a ton of damage uh and i know not everybody's fortunate not everybody has like in Michigan basements where it's on concrete. I have flooded this. I can't even tell you how many times just actually this morning. And I don't even think you probably even noticed. I actually, one of my stock tanks flooded and I don't know if you noticed or not, but I have um, alarms on every single one of them. Of course the battery, the battery, of course on the one that was supposed to alarm, I got to, I got to switch the battery, but right. Um, so it gets to a certain point and these alarms are not very expensive. You can get them on Amazon, any water leak, um type detector uh these these ones i like particularly because i've tried other ones and i just enjoy these ones you can get like a three pack for less than 20 bucks it's well worth the expense uh because i keep them just at a certain level so if it ever gets up to a certain point then oh it, it's it's super super loud sounds like a you pulled a fire alarm at a school or something that's, that's the best awesome. way i can explain it. it's super loud all right uh let's see here charlie said the studio looks great and your guest is the best you're both down the earth and it shows well thank you so much charlie i definitely appreciate that um that's another thing i could talk about you know jeremy's all the time saying he is what what you see is what you get and he really is i mean it's the same in person as it is on the internet i mean if he doesn't agree with something he tells you i mean he doesn't sugarcoat it he's honest He's not a jerk about it, but he has his opinions and he has. What's that phrase that you used? <laughs> He's a dick without being a dick. <laughs> now I've been demonetized. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> so I got a kick out of it. That was the first time I've ever heard anybody um, use that phrase. But yep. uh, yeah, it was funny. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. We got Andrew uh, Prakowski in the house. How you doing, buddy? If you guys haven't checked out Andrew, definitely check it out. Um, I'm not even sure. I thought that you are a mod. Hopefully you don't mind, Andrew. I'm making you a mod so you stand out a little bit more. Um, Andrew's been putting out videos. I can't talk enough, actually. Him and I were talking earlier today about that, um, specifically with uh, Goody Ids and dealing with libraries and stuff like that. Um, Andrew's expertise is just above and beyond um, uh, to a whole nother level. So I just did a live stream that's uploaded here on the channel. You guys can definitely check it out. So uh, Andrew knows a lot about them. Yep. And what I appreciate about somebody that goes into the scientific basis in the background, because that's right up my alley. That's what I enjoy to do. 
I know not everybody can nerd out like that, but I, I enjoy that, that type of stuff. So. It's a beautiful library that, you know, nobody's really keeping and they, I've seen some really nice ones and uh, they're beautiful. Yes. Yep. Um, you got a $4 and 20 cent super chat from Chris with jobs Aquariums. Said, what's good, bro. Thank you so much, Chris, for the super chat. Hope you've been well. Uh, let's see. Wrenches are overrated, Priscilla said. <laughs> and if I took her wrench away, I wouldn't hear the end of it. Oh, man. I've done, I think I've done that once before. She was down at the lake today, I saw. Oh, was she? Um, Jeff is going to lose his wrench. <laughs> Are you ready to be a good boy now, Michael? <laughs> Let's see. Let's see where we're at time-wise. we got 22 in the house, which is excellent. Again, I'm not, I'm not consistent, and it was impromptu. Right. Um, so anybody... Uh, just chiming in, make sure you check out in the description below. We will be doing a live stream over on his channel, and then he's going to be put me under the spotlight and interview me. So should be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Let's see. Uh, Mob Guppy said we have a face group, a Facebook group for the Central Arkansas Aquarium Society. Feel free to join right on. So anybody that's in or around that area or just wants to know more about that Aquarium Society, definitely check it out over on Facebook. Uh, Mr. Bees is wondering, what are you going to take hostage from Jeff's? Does he have a water bottle? <laughs> oh, I think what he's referring to, if I remember right, um, is my wife over on Facebook back at the American Library Association, which of course I'm representing here with my shirt, um, back a few months ago here in Michigan, my wife wanted to make it a joke because when Lucas was in our room, um, taking a look at my my livestock setups because we we're doing room sales and she he left his water bottle so she wanted to make it a fun thing and then we just were nerd out about it and just being goofy <laughs> like i was holding different poses and positions like i was holding the baby and just yeah. completely trolling because that's what we do i mean that's what our family does right um you know not everybody understands that humor but she was like i just want you to be goofy with it so i was like whatever so uh jeremy needs a hat jeff you be twins i miss my hat the one hat if you guys remember i used to wear was my orlando hat back when we took our trip down to florida back last march um i can't wait to get back down there someday um i definitely want to check out imperial tropicals i know mike they're doing a whole revamp and pretty much every one of their breeding rooms and i would love to bring you guys an update uh video i know just keep a lookout um in the community not from me but i don't want to give it away so if you guys don't follow mike over imperial tropicals definitely check it out um not being paid for by or sponsored by to say that i really respect um uh their entire business and their entire motto behind it so um you guys can check out i did a i did a full um tour down there and i got hours upon hours of video unfortunately there's certain things that can't be released because that would take away from their growth in their channel, which I respect and understand. Um, let's see here. Bob Kaler said, Jeff, what is the biggest difference you see in yours in uh, Jeremy's fish room? Um, or Jeremy's assuming he fish He keeps room. a lot of different stuff than I do, of course. You know, I don't have very many cichlids. I don't have any... Uh, killy, killyfish. He's got a lot of killyfish. I like those. Man, they're awesome. Um, but like severums and like the, um, oh, what's the parrot fish that you've got? The, oh, the hybridized yeah, blood parrot. I don't have any blood parrots. I've never kept anything like that. You know, um, he's got a couple of catfish in his ninety gallon that, you know, I don't have. Um, I would say that is a big difference. He keeps a lot of different things that I don't. And I only have like 30 aquariums and he has over a hundred. 
So it's not about the size. Um, okay, <laughs> where we're going with yeah. that. Yeah, of course it's about the size. Yeah. Um, it's about quality over quantity, and the reason I keep so many tanks is because of the fact that we do a lot of rescue projects, um, and I have redundancy, as he was talking about throughout the fish rooms when it comes to specific species. So I could theoretically be breeding, you know, hundred different species if I wanted to, it wouldn't be hard for me to do that. Um, if I had the funds in order to acquire that many species, I, you know, I wouldn't personally do that. Um, we'll be talking more I th probably about that. I'm sure that may come up um, over on his live stream here in a little bit. So I don't want to give too much of that away in case that's one of the things that we end up talking about but um as far as species and stuff like that and you know, i've covered a lot of that stuff here on the channel but uh yeah i mean i'm all about diversification i enjoy the challenge in having a variety i'm like equal opportunist you know i i enjoy i think that would probably be what other folks have said they're a surprise as far as the the variety of different species that we have mm -hmm. yep so. I also love the uh, forty gallon long. I don't know that I'd ever seen one in person. Oh and yeah, I those love are great. That uh, footprint. Mm -hmm. The forty gallon longs are nice. He's got a few of them. So, all right, um, we got Pat in the house. Hello. Um, so Pat said hi. Okay, so animal questions. Yep, we're gonna be wrapping this up here in just a little bit. Uh, we will be live over on his channel, at eight p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So just a few more minutes here, and then we'll take a little bit of breather in between, and then we'll get set up to go live on his channel. So you can check that link out down in the description below. So if we miss anything here, bring those questions over to uh, his channel. But yeah, any uh, just general Q&A, uh, specifically freshwater species of aquatic life. So, you know, um, we don't really dabble too much into the saltwater field. I've been down that road. Not a huge fan of it. So I lose interest quite quickly <laughs> when it comes to salt water. Uh, my attention span, I, I lose interest very quick. A thing that I noticed today about filming salt water stuff is if they heavily shoot it and inject it with salt, you know, it's really hard to film those things too. So that's something that would kind of turn me off <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> uh, Valley Fish, how you doing, buddy? It's always nice to see you. Uh, Priscilla said, so did you learn something from Jeremy, something you're going to apply and change when you get back home? I think on, um, as I get into some different, um, egg scatters and mouth brooders, you know, I'm going to get into some of that stuff this next year. Um, the way to deal with fry, I'm going to do a little bit different. I'm going to probably ad adopt some of his practices there. That was definitely something that I liked. Um, Mr. B said camera equipment, same or different? I don't know if that's a question. If You might have to clarify, Mr. B's, if, if you're talking about here in the studio aspect of it, is what I'm thinking. Um, I just saw 40 lawn for the first time in person last Saturday. Yep, um, it's same footprint as a 55, it's just shorter. And I don't like, I mean, I've talked about that before. I would do 40 breeders just because of the footprint or even a 50 low boy if they weren't so expensive. Um, because I don't keep a lot of fish that need more, you know, elevation as far as um, more vertical space like discus and angel fish. I've been through that road. I've done that thing. And I'm just not a huge fan of them. So most of the stuff I keep, they need more linear footage. Let's see. Picked up seven tanks, cleaned 12 for the first rack, broke a top in the process. Oh, that's that stinks. Uh, what size difference between his 182s and mine? We went ahead and fed them earlier, and I think he still has to get some video for you, Michael, because um, I know I think that was one of your requests. Yeah. But I don't know if you happen to. I went in there see on the green not. beans earlier, and they weren't out, and I haven't really laid eyes on them yet, so I can't really tell you yet, Mike. I can tell you from when you sent them to me, because they're really small, probably three quarters of an inch, they've they've definitely tripled in size. And I'm not using a continuous drip. If I was, then um, we just do typically top-offs in that tank. 
Uh, Priscilla said, Jeremy, my Limia nigrofasciata are breeding. That's awesome. Congratulations. Um, let's see here. 50 breeder just picked up today is pretty cool. That's awesome, Steve. Uh, Dank said, I trade one top for seven tanks in a day. Ha ha. Um, John said, my uh, geophagus spawned today, and I'm getting different info from the internet. Some sites say they will hatch in 10 to 14 days, and some say three to five. Then the female will collect and hold them through 14 days. Um, depends on what species you have, um, because geophagus is kind of a broad spectrum. But that is, I would say that's a fair and accurate assessment within that time range. So i would lean more towards that seven to 14 day time frame three to five is pretty aggressive now depending on your water chemistry it could i mean theoretically if you had high temps uh the embryos can tend to hatch out a little bit faster but yeah um what's your thoughts on power feeding Mike's trying to. Uh, what is my thoughts on power feeding? Um, I, I, if that's a legit question, I, <laughs> I, I know he already knows my response because I've talked about it before. But trying to get a rant, I think. <laughs> no, I won't go into a rant. I talked about that already enough. Um, I don't know. Let's let's wrap this up here because we got about fifteen minutes, and there's twenty four you guys watching. I hate to end on this note, but. I'm going to have to keep you guys in suspense. If you want to continue this conversation on, check out in the link in the description below. We're going to be heading over here at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so in about 17, 18 minutes over to Jeffro's channel here on Jeffro's Fishkeeping, and we will carry on with a Believe in interview. So he's going to put me in the hot seat. I uh, have the light and everything shining on my bald <laughs> head. And, uh, yeah, so it should be entertaining. You guys can definitely challenge. I'm all for the challenge. Um, if you guys have any questions there for me, uh, I don't know how long we're going to go on. It will be a longer live stream, I would presume, but I'm not quite sure. So I don't know if you have anything that you want to end on here no, before we head sure over there. You guys don't want to miss it. So, all right, you guys. So with that being said, we'll talk to you guys right back here on the next one. As always, stay encouraged. Keep on keeping on happy fishing. And we'll see you guys over here at Jeff Rose in just a few minutes.